Good morning and welcome to Living Local 15. Thank you for joining me today. First up, I am speaking with Union Street Market to learn about all of their exciting events happening right now at Electric Works. Then the Embassy Theater joins me in studio to share about their upcoming Broadway season and the first show that's on sale right now. And later, it's Women's Wealth Wednesday with Foster Financial. Are you ready? Let's get started. Fashion, food, and fun. You're watching Living Local 15 with your host, Jessica Williams. Union Street Market offers a range of regionally sourced food and beverages on their historic Electric Works campus located in downtown Fort Wayne. And joining me today to discuss their upcoming events and new developments are their market directors, Erwin Husidich and Katie Silliman. Hello, good morning. Good morning. How are you guys doing? Good, how are you? Good. Okay, so Electric Works is, of course, a buzz, popular place that has been in development. I mean, you all have been around for a couple couple of years now, I yep. feel like. Yeah. And it's added such a value to our downtown with all of the combined resources that people can experience while being there. And so I know that you all have so much happening, including the restaurants, but also events that people may not know that you throw throughout the week. Yep. So um, just kind of start off, Katie, by giving us an overview of what Electric Works is and what people really, what you want for them to experience when they come visit. Sure. Well, so uh, first and foremost, at Union Street Market, we're really trying to establish ourselves as uh, a bit of a food hub, uh, particularly on the southwest side of town, mm -hmm. as also a place for food merchants and entrepreneurs to come and establish and grow their own businesses. Uh, within the market itself, uh, there are a variety of vendors that you can find there seven days a week. We also have a variety of pop-up markets that occur um, throughout the year, be it vintage, um, pet markets, the holiday market around the, around the Christmas time. Um, so that's the, a space that we are now really starting to establish. Uh, and then also just a great gathering place for all types of community events, mm -hmm. uh, like the, the, tr the Brooks Family Trunk or Treat that will happen at the end of October. Um, it really is a place where we're trying to bring community together. Uh, you think they talk about third spaces. Uh, so if your first place is where you live, your second place is where you go to work, and then a third place in your life is where you go to find community. Mm. And that really is what we're trying to create at Electric Works. Yeah, absolutely. And that community aspect is all about bringing people together. Yep. Right? And so, Erman, um, talk to me about some of the events that you have that's upcoming. We've had a great summer with events. Uh, so excited to have the farmer's market back uh, and uh, upcoming events. Uh, as, as we've discussed before, uh, our bike nights have been hugely popular uh, and those continue. We have uh, one at the end of the month and our last one in September. So we're expecting uh, both of those uh, to be uh, very uh, very busy mm -hmm. uh, and also other events obviously so, uh, every Saturday morning we have the farmers market uh, and our first weekend in October the farmers market moves indoors and we're very excited to have the farmers market at Electric Works uh, year-round uh, and uh, looking for a, an exciting conclusion to uh, to our summer music series it's just a hustle and bustle mm -hmm. um, that's exactly what it was and that was an amazing feel and so mm -hmm. that's literally what you can expect in the winter market every Saturday. And it's great because we have our two hours of free parking in the beautiful market space. Yeah. So starting in October through the winter from nine to one o'clock, there will be the winter mm -hmm. market at Union Street Market and we have our two hours of free parking in the parking garage. Mm -hmm. So it'll be a great way to get in and out and getting your local produce throughout the year. Okay, that's really great. And um, Erman talked about the bike nights and also the um, farmer's market and the summer music series, but you also have other things yep. that happen. So share with me more. I know like trivia night and stuff. Yep. So Erman, you want to talk about, he's done a great job with the team of bringing trivia to okay, Union Street yeah. Market. The trivia, uh, have twice a month, uh, we bring in uh, a tincture of trivia and we have di different themes every uh, every time and they've been very successful. We, we have a, a lot of folks that come out uh, every time we have it. Uh, and it's just a great gathering place for friends mm -hmm. uh, to, to be able to, uh, to compete and uh, win some great prizes. Mm -hmm. And that's weekly uh, every or twice other, a month. Twice okay. a month. Twice a month. Is it the first the and third or um, second and fourth? Second and fourth Friday. Okay. Yeah, that's great. 
Um, so, um, so in addition to your events that you have and yep. all of the vendors, let's talk about the vendors for a moment. So, of course, people can come and experience different types of food. Yep. I mean, what I love is just the variety. Yep. There's different cultures. There's different um, styles of food, but it's made there. Yes. So it's fresh, but yep. it's kind of to go and you can sit down and enjoy the seating. Um, but as people will notice, there's vendors that come in and out yep. and you all are creating like this pop-up effect, sure. right? Yes. And, and developing it into an incubator program. So talk to me about that. Sure. So I think we've, the public market concept is uh, fairly new to Fort Wayne. Uh, a lot of times people will equate it to a, a food court like you see at a traditional mall. Yeah. Uh, we are looking for ways to create a little bit of a hybrid. The mm. main focus has been to support local food, local food entrepreneurs. Uh, you can think about it. There's quite a few of the food entrepreneurs that have come into the market as individuals that had prior food truck experience. Mm. It's, it's a different scenario when you're creating a seven day a week uh, food establishment as opposed to the food truck where you go to different locations and pick and choose the day of the week that you're open. Mm -hmm. It's not an easy endeavor. Right. Uh, so we are learning how to operate this market as the same time as our merchants. Mm -hmm. And so collectively, we're trying to figure out how do we create a space at Union Street Market where we can grow and support food entrepreneurs in that space. Mm -hmm. And we uh, believe that we found an opportunity to do that with the incubator programs mm -hmm. that we're really hoping to launch. Um, we're starting it now with some of the pop-up markets, but to launch it more formally in 2025, are there ways that we can connect with local entrepreneurship organizations yeah. and funders? We may have an entrepreneur that can create a great product, you know, amazing, I don't know, what have you, it uh, could be churros, uh, but they need a little bit of help with their business plan or mm -hmm. they create good food and they have a decent business plan but need some marketing support. Right. So right now we're in discussions with, you know, the various organizations and as a community, how can we come together to create a thriving space mm. for food entrepreneurs and Union Street Market is the perfect place to do it because you have different mechanisms for you to test out your food business. It yeah. can be Saturday, one day a week at the Saturday Farmer's Market. Mm. It could be a weekend pop-up where you're there for a couple days. Could it be a program where you're trying out a two-week experience? Mm. Um, or are you ready to grow and become a full-time merchant at the market? Yeah. So, you know, we've taken... it's. It's not easy to start something new. Yeah. We're an entrepreneurial organization ourselves, yeah. and we're trying to learn from the lessons learned in the uh, years that we've been opened mm -hmm. and try to grow from those experiences. Yeah. Well, that's exciting. Yeah. It sounds really great. I mean, I love to see every time I go in, like, oh, who's new and yep. who's coming? So it keeps it fresh. It does. And each time you go, then you're able to try something new. Yep. So yeah, I'll be having lunch there today. Great. <laughs> well, thank you both so much for coming in and sharing about what's happening at Electric Works and Union Street Market. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> and if you would like more information about Union Street Market, we'll have their website listed below. You can go online and check out all of their current vendors and pay them a visit. I'll see you after the break. Follow us on social media at Living Local 15. Broadway season is back and this is my favorite time of the year so I'm so excited to discuss their upcoming season with Carly Myers of the Embassy Theater. Hello. Hello. Hi, how are you doing? I'm doing great. Happy to be here. Yes. Okay. I cannot believe it. I felt like we were just coming off of the high of Mamma Mia. I know. <laughs> I know. Yes. We're getting close to the start of the season. Yes. Okay. So yeah. October 1st, save the date. The yes. first show is... Ain't Too Proud, The Life and Times Ain't of the Temptations. Proud. Oh, I love so that. So excited. This show also goes on, individual tickets go on sale on Friday. Okay. So very excited that that's, you know, we, we're still doing subscriptions, but for people that just want to do the individual show, those tickets will be on sale to the public on Friday. So, yes. Yeah. Okay. So tell us a little bit about the show. What can people, what do you think people can expect? Well, I think that the the one thing about this show that is amazing is anybody that knows anything about The Temptations, I mean, the, the, the music throughout the show is just fantastic. Yeah. But it really does shine a light um, on kind of what got them here, mm. you know, and what their story was. Right. Um, and just really inspiring stories, you know, yeah. from that and the last show of the season as well. So, yes. so, yeah, it's very, it's a great way, great energetic, joyful way to start the season. Right. And as you said, the music is going to be dynamic. Oh, um, I've 100%. seen the movie before, The Temptations, and 
it's just so incredible how these men started off in Detroit. Yes. They moved their way into Hollywood, the Hall of Fame, Absolutely. and just really the journey of their lives and yeah. all the good music. Oh. Uh, my girl. That's my girl, right. My girl. Ah, yes. That's one of them. <laughs> I will not be on the stage singing, but they're going to do a great job. Yes. Oh my goodness. Yes. Okay. So October 1st, people can start buying tickets and you have something special happening with your ticket packages this year. Yeah. So let's talk about it. Yeah. So we have our, our typical Broadway subscriptions, mm -hmm. which people can buy and it gets you the same seat to all five shows, which is pretty amazing. We've got great shows on the season uh, every year, but this year we're equally excited. Mm -hmm. uh, but then we also have something that we're calling the Balcony Club. Um, it will go on sale on September 8th, which is Be a Tourist uh, Day, which mm -hmm. we, the embassy will be open for that. And that is a way of getting into Broadway in a more affordable way. Mm -hmm. Not everyone can afford a regular subscription package. Mm -hmm. So this it will be uh, the pick of three shows from the season. And you'll be sitting in the upper balcony. And then you also have a drink ticket as well. Mm -hmm. And it's all in $99. No That's fees incredible. or anything. It's like all in. So yeah. that is a great deal. So for college students, students, young families, mm -hmm. seniors, um, people that just, you know, have a really fixed budget. Yeah. We totally understand that. We don't want arts and culture experiences. You know, they, they should be available and accessible to all. So yeah. we're excited to be able to offer that through Broadway, this Broadway season. I love that. Yeah. Or people who just love to go to Broadway and maybe they choose one show to yep. go to a year. Now yeah. you can get three. Yeah. Yeah. And that's that. a great price. Oh my goodness. That is so great. And then you also have a special for students. You really yes. look out for the students, right? Yeah. So we're really excited um, to offer student rush for all five of the shows this season. Mm -hmm. And remember, we're doing each show for two nights, which is a growth for the embassy yes. and for the Broadway experience yes. in Fort Wayne. So um, students can come to the embassy two hours before the start of the show. Mm -hmm. And there's a limited number of student tickets. Um, and those are $25 all in. Mm -hmm. um, and you can get, each student can get two tickets maximum. Yeah. So really great opportunity for people, again, that just may not want to, may not have the ability to come at a full price ticket. Yeah. Um, and Student Rush is known throughout Broadway as a whole thing. Mm -hmm. So we're excited at the embassy to be able to bring that um, to all those college goers and students. Yeah. Um, okay, so is this like high school and college? Yes, how, and how yep. does it work? Do they need to bring their student yep, ID? Yep, bring their student ID mm -hmm. and then we'll, we'll make it happen. Okay. We're excited. We've done it on and off through seasons, mm -hmm. but we're now committed to just doing it all the time yeah. for the shows. That is great. Yeah. And, and like you said, every single every single show will, will have two nights. Yes. Ah, Which finally offers flexibility. People so have been great. asking for that for yeah. a long time. So that's, we're growing it. You're growing yeah. in so many exciting ways. Okay, but then you also have your membership plan. Oh, right, the, people the, can subscribe your subscription yes, plan. Yes, the subscription yes. plan. So we've got, uh, start off with Ain't Too Proud, and then we've got Chicago, the musical classic. Mm -hmm. uh, and then we have Dear Evan Hansen at Hades Town, which we're getting a lot of buzz for those two shows. And then we wrap the season with Tina, the uh, musical on uh, Tina Turner, which is going to be amazing, yes. amazing way to wrap the, the season. But every, um, you get the same seat for every show, mm -hmm. this Packages start at $205 uh -huh. to get you into that subscription. And the great thing about that is you get then to first dibs the next year to re-up mm -hmm. your, your, your seats or to upgrade your seats, which is really the big thing that people do, yeah. is they kind of wait to get to their ideal seat over time. Okay, and yeah. then um, <laughs> it gives you kind of like your private little experience in our incredible auditorium. You know where you're going to be. You know the sight line. A lot of people have different preferences, so right. it's very important. Yeah, it is important because yeah. you want to enjoy the show and be comfortable. Yes, and absolutely. <laughs> close so you can yep. see all just the action the magic acting yes. on their faces yes absolutely oh, love it like yes. you said magical um and so people can um get that online yep. as well as purchase the tickets and then you all are wrapping up your music summer music series oh summer nights yeah yes. yeah so summer nights yeah we're uh we're doing that through the end of this month mm -hmm. and we've had a great season it's a great way for people to come and just like have a relaxing evening at the embassy mm -hmm. and they experience the music of from all these local performers and artists which are amazing in our ballroom, which is a space that people may or may not be used to. Right. And then you get access to our beautiful, like, rooftop patio, yeah. which is, and we pipe the music up there. And mm -hmm. it's just, we sub, we have catering from the local eateries and restaurants. It's just such a good, like, feel-good vibe on Wednesday nights. A great mm -hmm. way, like, in the center of the week to just experience some local talent. Yeah, and dance. Yeah, I've yes. been there. Did $5 ticket, too. Yes. $5. So that's, that's like, so good. yeah. I love yeah. it. Okay, well, so many exciting things yeah. happening. Um, I look forward to talking to you more as Great. the year goes on Absolutely. about the new shows. <laughs> Thank you, Carly. Sure. <laughs>
And if you would like more information about the Embassy Theater and their upcoming shows and their Broadway, well, guess what? You can actually go over to their website to check it out and get your tickets. And we'll be right back. Living Local 15, proudly driven by the Kelly Automotive Group. This segment sponsored by Foster Financial. Welcome back to Women's Wealth Wednesday, where I'm chatting with Caleb Doan, the Vice President of Foster Financial. Good morning, Caleb. Good morning. How are you? I'm doing well. How are you doing? <laughs> Good. Okay, so last um, Women's Wealth Wednesday, mm -hmm. we kicked off a new talking series about spousal mm -hmm. inheritance planning. Mm -hmm. And I know we have something that you want to add to it today. So what will we focus on? Yeah, so today we'll specifically be talking about spouses inheriting IRAs, so mm -hmm. traditional IRAs, which which is most you know what most people have, they typically get a 401k while they're working. A lot of times they roll it into an IRA when they're retired, mm -hmm. and so that's one of the most common types of accounts for people to in, to inherit. Um, and there's a lot of rules around it, and those rules have kind of changed in recent years. Um, you know, we talked a couple weeks ago about how over the next decade. $30 trillion is expected to change hands. Yeah. And that's you know mostly because the baby boomers are kind of well into their retirement now. Mm -hmm. um, and you know the reason why it's helpful to talk about on Women's Wealth Wednesday is because women are actually expected to be the largest beneficiaries of yeah. that. And so there's gonna be a lot of money changing hands in the coming years. Mm -hmm. And a lot of times the government likes to get a piece of that when that happens. And so we like to plan for that ahead of time and try to reduce that tax liability any way we can. Okay, and this is um, about specifically traditional IRAs or Roth IRAs also? Yeah, so it, it applies to Roth IRAs mm -hmm. as well, but the, the tax implications for a Roth IRA, mm -hmm. the taxes have already been paid right. on those. And yeah. so, you know, hopefully when, when somebody is inheriting assets, a piece of that is Roth. That's what everyone kind yeah. of hopes for. Um, but most of the time, the vast majority of it is traditional IRA. Mm -hmm. um, and spouses actually have kind of a unique option that they mm -hmm. get to choose that almost nobody else gets. When kids inherit an IRA, typically they need to cash out and pay taxes on mm -hmm. that entire account value within 10 years of inheriting it. And that's basically just because the government wants to get their piece of the taxes, right? right? So uh -huh. if, if a child inherits an IRA, um, they're typically needing to cash it out within 10 years. If a spouse inherits an IRA, they have another option. Mm -hmm. They get to inherit that IRA as if it was their own IRA. Mm -hmm. So they don't have to cash it out within 10 years if that's you know the option that they choose. What they need to focus on is required minimum distributions over the course of their life. Mm -hmm. So if they are RMD age, they have to continue taking those RMDs. Okay, so let's step back for a moment. Mm -hmm. So with the IRA, with those individual retirement accounts, this is if one of the spouses mm. has one and the other spouse inherits it. So you're saying, so you're saying that they can inherit the IRA. Yeah, yeah, okay. that's exactly right. Mm -hmm. And IRAs, they're individually owned. So mm -hmm. the, the IRAs cannot be joint accounts. Mm -hmm. And so a lot of times, you know, a husband will have his wife listed as the 100% yeah. primary beneficiary. The wife has her husband listed as the 100% primary. Mm -hmm. And so whichever passes away first, is going to get the other's account. And so it sounds like you're saying it also still keeps the structure of an IRA and it's not like a balloon investment in a sense where you just get a big chunk of money, mm. but you actually still have to take those distributions, right? Yeah, if okay. somebody is RMD age, mm -hmm. they have to take those. If a spouse that inherits it is not RMD age, mm -hmm. the big benefit too is that they don't have to take RMDs until they hit mm -hmm. required minimum distribution age. Okay. So I mean, that that's a nice benefit for spouses. Yeah. One of the big mistakes though that a lot of people make is they, they assume that it's something like, you know, kind of like that balloon reference where they have yeah. to withdraw all of it in the year that mm -hmm. they get it. And if they do that, if they inherit a $250,000 IRA and they cash all of that out in the year that they get it, you're paying taxes on 250 grand right. in that year. And the other crazy thing is, you know, if, if you're filing as a single filer eventually, mm. I mean, your, your tax brackets are compressed now. And so that right. could kick you into a much higher tax bracket if you take a large withdrawal. Mm -hmm. Okay, so let's talk about the benefits. What are the benefits mm -hmm. in them receiving this um, uh, 
IRA based off of a death, unfortunately. Yeah. So, I mean, of course, you get to continue using the IRA to generate income mm -hmm. for you over the course of your retirement. Mm -hmm. So, most of the time, you know, if a husband and wife both have an IRA, a lot of times they're taking withdrawals mm -hmm. in retirement to live off of. So, you get to keep doing that is, is the, the really big benefit. A lot of times, you know, pensions, for example, if they're only a single life pension, if somebody passes away, that pension might be, might be gone. The payments yeah. might stop. Mm -hmm. With an IRA, a spouse can continue to take those withdrawals. Mm -hmm. The biggest thing to just watch out for is going to be the tax implications. Mm -hmm. And so we can do a lot of things ahead of time yeah. to, to prep for that. When somebody is you know, married filing jointly, mm -hmm. you have pretty wide tax brackets. And yeah. especially in retirement, a lot of times people are in a relatively low tax bracket. Mm -hmm. We can do Roth conversions ahead of time so that instead of getting that giant traditional IRA, you get maybe half traditional, half Roth, and then you don't mm -hmm. have to worry about the taxes as much. That's interesting. So how should um, spouses be preparing mm. for this now? Because I think a big point that you said is that a pension could not be transferred or stop while you probably want to leave a retirement account that they could actually access. Right. Yeah, mm -hmm. exactly. The, the biggest thing, if, if spouses have a large traditional IRA mm -hmm. out there, the Roth conversions can be a very, very important tax planning piece mm -hmm. to do you know, long in advance. But it's not necessarily too late to do it. If somebody's 75 out there and they, yeah. they think, oh, it's too late for me to, to get money into a Roth account, mm -hmm. you can do Roth conversions no matter how old you are. Mm -hmm. And so it can be a great time to, to do those so that you don't leave your spouse in a difficult tax situation yeah. and you don't accidentally you know, put the government as a beneficiary on there. Mm -hmm. We don't want, you know, as little as possible, we want to go to the government right. as much as possible <laughs> we want to go to our spouse. Okay, well, that's really good advice. We appreciate it, Caleb. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. And if you would like more information about Foster Financial, we'll have their website and phone number listed below to get your complimentary consultation. And I'll see you after the break. This segment sponsored by Foster Financial. Go to the Living Local 15 page on Wayne.com for recipes from the show, to watch a segment again, and to get information on products and services featured on Living Local 15. Content segments during today's Living Local 15 were paid for by these sponsors.